we're here today in front of the infamous Jane Or Manor, about to embark on a quest to save this young girl's fiancé from a mysterious and unsettling residence up ahead. The quest is one of the very first RuneScape quests ever invented. Little did the developers know that within the quest lies a component that fundamentally explains what is truly needed to succeed in our mission to classify RuneScape bots with machine learning. This is part 2 of the series, so if you haven't yet, please check out the premise and how we collected the data by clicking the link at the top right. Today we're going to talk about all the new data we collected, what we've learned from exploring that data, and the new information we're able to extract from our initial raw collection. Once that's done, we'll look back around to how incredibly related this quest is to solving the overarching problem of bot classification, what that means for the future of RuneScape, and what you can do about it. The very first thing we did was to collect much, much more data. As we mentioned last time, we needed a good variety of bot, but also non-bot data. Hence, we started with the central hotspots for non-bot players to be at, Lumbridge and the Grand Exchange. Not saying that bots won't be there, but there would definitely be more real players there than almost anywhere else in the free-to-play world. Next, we collected data from different skilling areas where bots typically reside. We added a field in our collection file called Location, which was brought up by Desolator in our Discord. It'll help us a lot in the future by determining where we got the data from and what we expect the bots to be scaling in this area, or not scaling if they're in one of the player populated areas. We modified the code previously written to automatically walk to different mining spots because there just weren't that many players to collect data from in each uh, spot other than in the more populated worlds. Then we reproduced scripts for combat, woodcutting, and fishing. As a side note, I'm getting really good at botting clients, so it's for the greater good, I swear. Anyway, that was it. I ran it during the normal playing hours for a week, got banned a couple of times in the process, but ended up with over 2,000 data points of player data that we can analyze and classify in the future. You can access the data in the GitHub link below, along with the current static notebook that I'll be looking through. Actually, I just found out about this cool tool that I'm planning to use called Binder. You can run the exact notebook uh, that I'm using for this video in your own browser. The link is in the description too. It's essentially a fully functional Python notebook that might take a little bit to load, but it lets you run everything and even mess around wherever you'd like. That's it, it's time to move on to phase two, exploration. The technical term used for this phase is exploratory data analysis, or EDA. Its purpose is essentially to understand the data through a variety of typically graphical methods. By properly formatting the data and plotting them in all sorts of graphs and diagrams, we get to really learn the underlying structure, identify anomalies, and test the assumptions we may have about the data going in. Big and fancy words for now, but it'll all be clear soon, I promise. First things first, we had to make sure the data was clean. We got rid of all the duplicates that were accidentally collected, and the data points where the high scores API had failed us. And that's it, it's clean. Usually there's a lot more that goes into the cleaning process, especially if the data is more complex. But here we control everything about the collection process and we know what's coming in, so we, we know that there's not much needed to do on that end. And then we got into data exploration. We started by plotting a few charts using the whole data set, so this should be somewhat representative of most OSRS players. This here is a correlation heat map among the collected players' free-to-play skills. The closer the number is to one, the more correlated the skills are. A correlated variable basically means that you can say the higher the strength level of any particular player, the higher their attack level will probably be as well. So we can see here that some, some of them are obviously related to us, especially for those of us who play OSRS. The combat skills are related to each other, mining and smithing, woodcutting and fire making, and so on. Anyway, we continue looking through some more graphs, mainly on the distribution of different skills, and you can look into them in greater detail on Binder or GitHub, but they weren't particularly insightful to me. After that, we looked at two specific locations, the Grand Exchange and our mining spots. We tried to narrow down the scope to just the mining bots for now, uh, just to see if we could you know, find anything insightful. Now, EDA, in my mind, um, helps to mainly answer specific questions about data. In this case, what is the difference between players in the GE and mining locations? My underlying assumption would be that bots typically hang out in these mining spots, so I assumed we'd find some hidden structure we could use to quickly weed them out. 
I started by looking at the player's skills for hints, but it seemed pretty much all the same for most if not all skills. They were similarly distributed and similarly structured for the most part, other than the GE having much higher skill level players overall. The only real difference I could find was that the mining location had a significantly higher concentration of players with high mining levels than at the GE, but that's just to be expected. So that in mind, I knew it wasn't going to be as simple as just looking through the player's skills, and we hadn't had any other kind of data that the machine learning algorithm could understand just yet. With that, I jumped straight into engineering our own new features. Feature engineering is the process of making new features out of old ones, to basically format the data in a way that machine learning algorithms can understand. That can take many forms, such as putting continuous data into bins, or changing words into numbers. Feature engineering also refers to the creation of new data based on existing data that helps the algorithm run more smoothly. In our case, we want to derive some new features that would make our algorithm learn and perform better. A great way to understand the importance of feature engineering is to look no further than the quest before us. Just to explain the situation, the lady out front, Veronica, was missing her fiancé who had left to check out the manor moments ago. We enter the spooky house and find that the only other person there is a crazy old scientist who tells us that her fiancé, Ernest, is now a chicken. And that the only way to unchicken Ernest is to retrieve three things scattered around the house. You'll need to find a rubber tube, a pressure gauge, and more importantly, an oil can. There are complex, albeit fun ways to get the first two, but I remember being stuck on the oil can for so long when I was a kid. I remember rage quitting out of that house and never completing the quest until I was older and smarter about using Google to cheat. See, the oil can is locked behind a door in the basement of Draenor Manor. There are levers to pull which opens some doors which lead to more levers which opens more doors. Eventually, with patience, skill, and maybe some luck, you can unlock the path necessary to getting the oil can and getting the hell out of that stinky mansion. The levers and doors that lead us to our oily goal happen to be the best analogy that comes to my mind when thinking of feature engineering. The levers are just like features. Good features open up new doors for us, and the best of features are oftentimes only available through the opening of other doors. More features lead to more paths, but be careful, because just like in this quest, it is not a linear path. We don't just keep getting good features the more doors we open. Some features may be bad or not work well with some of your previous ones. It is only through a careful selection of the right levers that you will open the door to your goal. Now this is one of the fundamental concepts of machine learning, and it's all about the data you have, the data you make, and the data you choose. Be smart, be patient, and make sure you pull the right levers even if it's multiple layers deep, and you'll stumble upon the most amazing solutions. Now back to the task at hand, there are many complex and mathematical ways to go about the process of creating these features, but a lot of the best features are those that intuitively make sense in any given context. For example, when I think of a bot, I think of a fresh off the tutorial island look with no um, or minimal armor, and in this case maybe a pickaxe. So my first thought was to simply count how many pieces of equipment each player had on by seeing which columns weren't negative one. Another assumption I had was that bots were specialized, so they mainly have one skill above level 10 that's way higher than the rest of their skills. Hence I counted the total number of skills each player had above level 10. This of course would be skewed for noobs of the game, but will hopefully account for that in other ways like combat level and other things that make up a person's combat level. We also looked at the mean and standard deviation of the player's skills. The final one I put together was the difference from mining level to the player's skill level mean. In my head, we already had a much better shot of pulling apart bots from players because if they had a low mean and high mining level, then they may be focused mainly on a particular skill of mining. Now that we have a bunch more, hopefully meaningful variables to play with, we should have a much easier time separating bots from non-bots. Looking at the distribution chart of these new variables, it looks like there are some more obvious differences this time. We can see that they could be separable based on their combat level versus their skill standard deviation. 
We also see that it may be separable based on their mean and a few other variables. A big thing to look for as well is that if these variables are correlated or are dependent on each other. Producing predictions based on multiple variables that are correlated are redundant because they mean the same thing in the end. For example, seeing here how base level is directly correlated with combat level, we know that we can essentially eliminate one or combine them together. Anyway, stepping back to the bigger picture, there may be a lot of overlapping points here and there really may be a lot of bots in the player areas and players in the bot areas. So what we really need right now is to separate them based on their classes instead of their locations. To do this, we need labels. We need data saying whether each player is a bot or not. Now we could look at the data set and slowly try figuring out if we deem this player to be a bot, but that's difficult, time consuming and prone to tons of errors. This is where So We Go On really stepped up to develop a platform that we can use to go through and label each bot easily and efficiently. He made a Flask web application to use the data that we gathered by showing the related items images based on their IDs and also the skill levels just like how we look at them in game. However, similar to any machine learning algorithm, it may be hard for a normal person to evaluate if the player they are seeing is a bot without the right features. For example, it may be a lot easier if we showed them numbers like we had with mean, standard deviation, combat level, or the mining level minus mean, so they wouldn't have to do it themselves. That's it, here's where I really need your help. I have to admit that I don't possess the same 200 IQ knowledge of RuneScape some of you do, so please let me know what makes up a bot. Other than the data that only Jagex has, like click patterns or responses to random events, is there anything that we can derive from the data or collect over again that would help in the analysis of bot or not bot? Remember, the best features are ones that humans will find easy to make decisions on as well. So some things that jumped out at me as I was writing, filming and editing this video were to maybe create features by going through a greater analysis of names, types of items worn, experience points instead of levels and whether or not they are members. However, I still don't know if for certain if any of these will be useful and it'd be costly to acquire the data so I hopefully we can get better results with the data that we already have. Also thanks to our resident ML expert Lugus Intelligence again who explored options for unsupervised learning with me beforehand. And unsupervised learning means that we wouldn't have to label anything. Honestly, I tried out some different algorithms. You can even see some remnants of using k-means in the notebooks. But I noticed that I would have to go multiple layers deep into it before I could be confident that there'd be a cluster I would confidently call bots. I also tried out some techniques for dimensionality reduction and thought I might need to properly select features first. Hence, even with unsupervised techniques, I'm going to want to make sure that I have all the possible good features thought up before narrowing down. Either way, it just goes to show that the next step for us is pulling together the collective knowledge of you OSRS enthusiasts to make sure I'm not missing any features. And then we'll dive into some supervised or unsupervised machine learning to accurately and automatically predict if a given player is a bot or not bot. Finally, we'll use those predictions in real time to automatically report players who we deem to be bots. And that's all folks, I'm seriously considering doing some kind of spin-off series, maybe a more educational one with shorter videos, where I can hone in on an ML concept with data and examples from online games, and provide a small digestible notebook as opposed to these monster ones. Another series idea could be me trying to help people out with their own ML projects that's related to online games, uh, because I've been having fun answering a lot of you guys' questions on your own projects that are related as well. So please let me know what you think down in the comments below. The polls are really broken and I have no idea how to see results, uh, so comments or Discord would be best. Anyway, thank you for being here. It's been an amazing journey so far and will make our mark on OSRS history before you know it. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.